what I do when I get started is I kind of piece together all the parts I want to use and kind of really figure out um, exactly what, ain't, what direction I want to go with the bike, how I want it to look, kind of. Um, a lot of things will change along the way, so I just kind of start put, putting pieces together. Like, I know what engine I want to use. I don't have that engine, but I have a mock-up engine I can use for it. I know what transmission I want to use. Um, I have the general frame and uh, front end that I'm going to use. I know kind of the lines I want to have, and as I start putting everything together, it'll materialize for me. As you see as I work on this thing, I don't measure a whole lot. There's going to be a few things I have to measure, the critical mechanical things. I'm putting a hubless wheel on it, and that has to be, that has to be done perfect. So those things are going to be measured. They're going to be completely accurate. I'll be out here with, I mean, measuring down to the, you know, the thousandth of an inch on those kind of things. The hub of the hubless wheel, it's not really hubless. It just so happens that the hub is the, almost the same size as the wheel. If you look inside the wheel here, you can see that the wheel doesn't fit properly. So I'm going to have to remachine these spokes down so I can weld them to the wheel. So that's something that has to happen. And I don't have a CNC shop. So I got to set up my old Bridgeport machine here with a rotary table. And basically, I don't even know how I'm going to fixture everything up. I'm probably going to have to make a custom fixture just to machine these parts down. It's going to take me the better part of the day to get this stuff done. This rod here should be right out to the edge. So that's the amount of material I have to take off the whole thing. It's about, uh, this looks like about uh, an eighth of an inch. I'm going to machine down these three spokes for this hubless wheel. And uh, I kind of made a fixture, kind of a makeshift fixture that I can quickly machine these pieces down so I can move forward. Um, on the rotary table. I'm going to do a small light cut first just to see what happens with, uh, with the material and I can move forward. The other two pieces should be able to put on a machine and match them just like this one and then uh, they should fit right in the wheel. It should have a natural fit. This is a moment of truth that you know whether I'm good at this or not. Come on now. Don't be ashamed to say it. Who's your boy? So I'm going to bust this rim off the hub and I'm going to mount the tire up to it. You can kind of get a general idea of how it's going to look when it's all together. I'm just going to make a couple of quick cuts here. I got to work it into place now, but it gives me an idea. Basically, what I'm, what I'm lining up here is this is the inner bearing and this is the outer bearing race. And they got to keep them square to each other. Uh, when I clamped the wheel down with this, with this clamp, I forgot that I had to do that. So I was basically pulling them relative to each other. So what I did was loosen this up, tighten these guys back up. And then now I just got to go back in and tighten this thing up again. And I should be ready to weld. The key is on these welds is for me to get good penetration into both pieces of material because if I don't, it might look pretty on the surface, but the weld's worthless. This rear sprocket is the sprocket that drives the bike. I mean, the chain from the, the transmission is going to go to a jack shaft, which is going to run a chain that runs this sprocket. And it's the one that rotates the back wheel and gets the bike down the road. People are always concerned since the sprocket's so big, they're always like, why is that sprocket so big? How does the bike run? Isn't it geared weird? But it's not because I jack shaft it and I manipulate the gears in the jack shaft, the sprockets, and um, come up with a normal ratio for it. I've seen a couple guys try and copy my design and they didn't do this. They're trying to run it off of a friction drive, which is basically a little spinner that runs, rubs on the tire through friction and it just doesn't work. Everybody has their natural gift, and I think mine is pounding out the metal and also making bikes run good. Yeah.